On the eve of the 2004 AMA Motocross Championship season, questions abound. Carmichael was back, but would he dominate in RC fashion? Or would 2004 belong to Chad Reed? Kevin Wyndham had the speed, but could he go the distance? And who emerged from the field as a worthy contender? Afternoon, the 2004 AMA Chevrolet Motocross Championship Series would get underway. It was the return of Ricky Carmichael. Many questions would be answered. Round one got off in a hurry. Jason Thomas would pick up the hole shot, but a few turns later, it was all Carmichael. Ricky was back. With Carmichael all but checking out, the battle for second turned high. Kevin Windham, number 14, on board his Honda, and number 12, David Billman, riding for Yamaha. This was a battle royale for second that would continue well into Moto 1. Lurking in fourth place was Chad Reed. Fresh off his win in the Supercross circuit, Chad Reed would pass David Billiman for third and set his sights on Kevin Windham. Team KTM had high hopes for Grant Langston of South Africa coming into the 2004 season. But little did we know future sightings, Grant Langston would be limited. The battle for second raged on between Chad Reed and Kevin Windham. But at the checkered flag, it was all number four. Ricky Carmichael will pick up the victory in moto number one and start the season off right. But questions still remain. Did Carmichael have the stamina to go two motos in a row? Any questions that lingered about the fitness of Ricky Carmichael were quickly answered. Carmichael went out and picked up the whole shot in moto two. But the Cobra, David Billman right there in the house. Dillon would stay in the running, but it was Kevin Windham who passed Sean Hanlon for third and set his sights on Ricky Carmichael, disrupting the champ's winning streak. Chad Reed got together with Sean Hamlin, number 22 and number 36. The battle didn't last long as Chad Reed checked away, then moved up on the inside of Kevin Windham and made the pass stick. Juan Hamlin went at it. Hamlin, number 36, on board the Suzuki, coming off series of injuries, looks sharp as he goes past the 67 of Juan. Chad Reed now moving up on the flying French for David Villamit, but takes a quick detour, almost taken out of photographer, but back on track. But the day belonged to Ricky Carmichael. It was the triumphant return of the king. I really miss, I, I really realized what uh, I love to do when I was sitting at home on the couch watching all these guys racing. And I love being out here. I love the fans. Once again, it was Ricky Carmichael on board the Honda picking up the whole shot. But his lead would not last long as he made his first mistake of the year. Just sold it. I was riding, you know, first lap and a half, and then I laid it down. Uh, Chad was behind me, and uh, I just went in the turn, and my back end popped out of the rut, and I went down. Carmichael, quick to learn from his mistakes, got the lead right back on a textbook pass on Chad Reed. The Hannah School of Comeback, Carmichael goes to the inside and gets right past Chad Reed. It was the exact same corner, and that time it was Reed that made the mistake. With Chad Reed trying to close in on Ricky Carmichael, he forgot to check the back door. Kevin Wooden snuck right in. Does he have the drive to get to this ready section? Yes, he does. Meanwhile, Chad Reed was having other problems, once again going off course. Another moto, another checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. Moto number two from Mount Morris, Ricky Carmichael looking to keep the streak alive, 
but Kevin Windham had something special for him as Windham picked up the whole shot. Carmichael not far behind, and it looked like a battle for four strokes for a while. Meanwhile, Chad Reed, David Villeman, and Heath Boss battled for third place. David Villeman would make a great pass on Heath Boss as the three Yamahas continued to battle to try to track down the duo of Hondas out front. Kevin Windham was able to hold off Ricky Carmichael for a little while. And Carmichael had enough. Four motos, four wins. Ricky Carmichael had something cooking. Not only was he back, he was dominant. Stop number three, Motocross 338, Southwick Mass. The day started with a Doug Henry parade lap, who would not be racing at his favorite track as he prepared for the Supermoto season. Could Ricky Carmichael keep this unbelievable streak alive coming back from injury? In Moto number one, he said yes as he picked up the whole shot. Kevin Windham battling for fourth with Gibson and Anderson. Wyndham looks sharp, but Ricky Carmichael is nowhere to be found. You know, right now, if you're Sean Hamlin, you want to get a lap, don't you? I don't want to do another lap. At the end of moto number one, it was five motos in the books and five wins for Carmichael. Another moto, another RC hole shot. Hey, my trainer, Eldon Baker, had me in tip-top shape today, and the starts are awesome. Chad Reed was also looking awesome as he made a pass on Sean Hamlin for second. Once again, the chase was on to track down Ricky Carmichael. Kevin Windham would also make the pass on Hamlin. He would move into third. But for other riders, it was just a frustrating day. The Frenchman, David Villeman, passes teammate Tim Ferry for sixth. But with Ricky being so dominant, the pit board would say it all. Oh, no, not the high five on the last lap. With room to spare, Carmichael would coast to the finish line with his sixth straight auto win. Uh, next weekend, if I could pull it off, I really like Bud, so uh, yeah, 100 wins would be unbelievable. June 20th, Bud's Creek Motocross Park, Bud's Creek, Maryland. Ricky Carmichael going for a milestone, going for number 100. A good start for Carmichael but not so for the rest of the field. The rider goes down two, three, four, and we got a pile up. Heath Boss would pick up the whole shot. Ricky Carmichael back in the field, currently sitting in fourth. Chad Reed made quick work of Heath Boss, but Ricky Carmichael was still lurking in the back as he moved past David Villeman. With Voss dispatched, Ricky Carmichael could now do battle with his arch nemesis, Chad Reed. Reed and Carmichael going head to head on one of the greatest tracks in all of motocross. But then disaster would strike for Ricky Carmichael, only momentarily. That's the first time I've stalled it in a race situation. Just uh, made a little bit of an error. It was good, though. He's going to have to pass Chad Reed twice in one moto if he wants to win this moto. And Carmichael would do just that, getting past Chad Reed for the second time. That would be all Carmichael would need as he would go on for the moto victory. And there'd be one moto left for the magical 100.
Moto number two from Bud's Creek, Maryland. Would this be the day for Ricky Carmichael? Once again, Carmichael out in front, picking up the whole shot. If he was gonna be denied 100, someone was gonna have to step up. Chad Reed would pass David Villeman for second and try to track down Ricky Carmichael. Tim Ferry would have a great day as he moved past James Pavolny. Next, he would dispatch Michael Byrne for fourth. Yeah, Red Dog going to it. Kevin Windham, though, started poorly, would move up the pack. First and 10, getting past Rodriguez. Then for ninth, getting past Nice. The eighth position would come at the expense of Craig Anderson. He would take the seventh spot from James Pavoni Jr. Wyndham finally moved into fifth, getting past Australian Michael Byrne. And while Kevin Wyndham was moving up to the pack, Ricky Carmichael was moving into the history books. He'll always remember Bud's Creek. Ricky Carmichael picks up the magical 100. I, I, I can't believe it. It's a really a milestone and a, to win 100 races, man, it makes me feel old. But I, like you said, I, I'm only 24 and the, to be up there with guys like Jeremy, and uh, it feels unbelievable. I am so happy. I know it's going to sink in tomorrow, and, uh, and the day went so awesome. Mission accomplished, picking up number 100, but Ricky Carmichael had perfection on his mind. Redbud, track and trail, Buchanan, Michigan, saw the return of Michael Rocco, as well as Sebastian Cortelli. Carmichael loves Buchanan, Michigan, and he also loves hole shots as he picked up yet another one. Chad Reed would pass Ernesto Fonseca for second in the early going of Moto 1. But it was Sebastian Tortelli who looked as sharp as Tortelli passing he lost to move into podium position. Ernesto Fonseca was also on the move. Yeah, the Rock Leaf. Fonseca airing it out. Kevin Windham also moving up to the pack, getting past David Villeman for fourth. He wasn't done there. Kevin Windham passed Portelli for third. Buchanan favorite Mike LaRocco made a triumphant return to Michigan, but had his problems. The day belonged to Ricky Carmichael, at least in moto number one. Oh, oh don't put it here, man. I got to uh, gotta get ready for Bubba next year, you know. Carmichael was already looking to 2005. Another moto, another RC hole shot. Moto number two was like deja vu all over again. A nightmare for the rest of the pack as Carmichael picked up the hole shot. Kevin Windham would triple out to make the pass on David Filament. Mike LaRock would try the same move as he went for the pass on Anderson, but he would regret it. Mike LaRocco airing it out on LaRocco's lead. And that would set up the pass on Craig Anderson for seven. Mike was feeling at home at Buchanan, Michigan, but he wouldn't let that stop him. That is experience and the will to take from the other rider. Sebastian Tortelli, who looked very smooth and early going, had his problems later on. But it was pure perfection for Ricky Carmichael. Let's see if he can throw it down. Oh! oh uh, we're all on the same stuff. You know, I feel that this proves who's the best. The checkered flag once again to RC. So that's what Ricky's doing. That's He's kicking our butts. Round number six, Unadilla Valley Sports Center, New Berlin, New York. Weather canceled all track activity on Saturday. Would this be the weekend that the rest of the field would take down RC? Carmichael answered that question in the first 100 yards as he went to the front of the pack and picked up yet another hole shot. Portuguese rider on a KTM, Joaquin Rodriguez found the surface not to his liking. 
Meanwhile, Frenchman David Villeman took a liking to the soggy terra firma as he made the pass on Casey Johnson for fifth. Another Frenchman, number 103, Sebastian Tortelli, was coming back like gangbusters, and he would make a move on Michael Burke for third. Kevin Windham once again found himself playing catch-up, this time making the pass on Tim Ferry for sixth. Up front, a near miss for Ricky Carmichael. Dude, I almost crashed so hard in the back section. My foot came off, I was sideways, and uh, I, I tried to take a different line because there was a lapper in the way, and uh, man, I came out there and I was going through a deep rut and just caught my leg. His mom's prayers were answered, and once again, Ricky Carmichael would take moto number one. Track conditions deteriorating because of the rain, Ricky Carmichael had his work cut out for him. But once again, Carmichael left no doubt as he picked up the whole shot in Moto 2. Kevin Wyndham got a much better start this moto as he made a pass on Michael Byrne, seemingly with a bang. Whoa, he had a little firework action. Sebastian Tortelli was also in Fuego as he would make a pass in the seventh position on Nick Wade. Tim Ferry, who had been quiet, made a pass on his teammate, David Billman. He would move into fourth. Michael Byrne must have liked what he saw because he could also make a pass on David Billman, moving him into fifth. But everyone was amazed with the riding of Sebastian Tortelli. I mean, you know, worked my way up and passed Michael Byrne, and, uh, and man, he came back strong at the end and had to push again. Tired of finishing his third, Kevin Windham made a late charge and a pass on Chad Reed. But the day belonged to Ricky Carmichael. The fist pump was out, as was another checkered flag. Six for six, perfection in 04. It's going good. I think I answered everybody's questions about Kevin here. So, uh, got one more, and that's why Shugel. Uh, they say that's his track. Round number seven, a bittersweet day for Kenworthy's Motocross Park, Troy, Ohio, as the AMA said so long to this fabulous facility. Moto number one, the whole shot would not belong to Ricky Carmichael. That honor would go to Chad Reed. RC would have to get past Portuguese rider Joaquin Rodriguez as he would move into second and now do battle with Reed. Kevin Windham passes Rodriguez for fourth. But all eyes shifted to the front of the pack as Ricky Carmichael was lurking on the Australian. With a fantastic inside move, Carmichael would take over the lead. Back in the pack, Kevin Windham wasn't done moving. He would get past number 24 Honda rider, Ernesto Fonseca. But once again, a near miss for Carmichael. Jumping all the way over, and when I landed, I kind of landed in between some ruts. My feet came up, total squirrel move. I was holding on, I was all over the place. An international battle for fourth ensued in motor number one between Sebastian Tortelli and Ernesto Fonseca. But when the checkered flag was out, once again, it was Carmichael first to claim it. Carmichael missed out on the whole shot in Moto 1. He would not do the same in Moto 2. Once again, RC would pick up the whole shot. Kevin Windham had it in his mind not to let Ricky Carmichael check out, but first he would have to get past David Billiman for third. Carmichael's lead over Chad Reed was comfortable, but Ricky knew the race was far from over. Ernesto Fonseca was showing great progress after off-season knee surgery. He would make the pass on David Billiman for fourth. Sebastian Tortelli showed no courtesy to fellow countrymen. He would move past Billiman for fifth. Look at airing out that jump right there, Sebastian Tortelli. The moto number two checkered flag was no surprise, Ricky Carmichael. Here he is, Ricky Carmichael takes two wins here. He's a perfect 14 in 14 photos.
So the streak was alive as the champagne flowed for the last time at Kenworthy's. The jumping for round number eight was not confined to the track in Washington. Bubba got a little anxious as we welcome back Ezra Lusk and Doug Henry. The day was perfect, the track was perfect, as was Ricky Carmichael. But the whole shot would go to Joe Aloff. Rusty Holland would make a pass on Aloff for his time out front. And then a classic battle for third. I drove it in on the inside and then we bumped. I was like, whoa, he looked back at me. I'm like, oh man, I, I ticked him off. The battle would rage on RC and Reed, passing leader Rusty Holland. But as they made their way to the beautiful conifers of the Pacific Northwest, Ricky Carmichael would make the pass, taking a bail cover with him. Once again, the checkered flag came out for number four, Ricky Carmichael. And a great finish for Ezra Lusk, finishing fifth. For Doug Henry, a top 20 finish would not be in the cards. He would finish 21st and no points. For Carmichael, a time to explain to Chad Reed what went wrong. Moto number two from Washougal, and once again, Ricky Carmichael out in front. While Carmichael's in the process of checking out a great battle ensued for fourth, Lusk, Philemon, Rodriguez, and Fonseca. Coming back from injury, Ezra Lusk rode with passion. Ernesto Fonseca continued to show promise, as did David Villeman. But for Joaquin Rodriguez, he could not keep the pace. And despite this mishap, number 103, Sebastian Tortelli continued to move up to the field, first making a pass for seventh on Ezra Lusk. Next would be David Villeman, as Tortelli moved into fifth. He wasn't done there, though. He was moving up on Nick Wade and looking for position number four. For Ricky Carmichael, it was all about the pit board. Washougal and the checkered flag belong to RC. <laughs> Round number nine, Spring Creek Motocross Park, Millville, Minnesota. The fans came out in force. And the question that remained, was Michael Essie the real deal? It's Chad Reed that'll lead them into the first corner. That's it, you know, Lessie was claiming the whole shot, so I had to go out there and get it. With Chad Reed out in front, Ricky Carmichael was on a mission, first passing David Villeman for third. Rodriguez would have his problems, in effect giving Ricky Carmichael second. So the battle was on, Ricky Carmichael and Chad Reed. This time, though, Chad was staying put. Oh, wait a minute. This is what we've been waiting for all year long. Chad Reed takes it and give it. But Carmichael would get him in the whoop section. Oh, did you see that? Carmichael just bouncing so far into the whoop. And for Michael Lessie, the results were not good. On the final lap in motor number one, it was Ricky Carmichael pulling away. And once again, the checkered flag. In motor number two, the Australians teamed up to grab the whole shot. Chad Reed and his cousin, Craig Anderson, out in front. Once again, it is Chad Reed with his cousin. What is up with the Australian connection? Carmichael wasted little time showing who owned this track.
but Chad Reed would not let Ricky check out as he had done so many times in the past. As the race progressed, Chad had his problems and then this near disaster. Fortunately for Sean Hamlin and Chad Reed, they would both be okay. Once again, it was Sebastian Tortelli, number 103, making the moves, this time on young Michael Lesson for fifth. Then Tortelli would move past Ernesto Fonseca, picking up the position. And again, the French connection proved too much for David Villeman. He would yield third. Michael Lesson was done for the day. From the sadness of Alessi to the joy of Ricky Carmichael. Another moto, another win. Could it be possible Carmichael could go perfect once again? We got a good thing going. We're gonna, you know, the main thing is the uh, the championship. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself with a perfect season. I just want to get that number one plate. Round number 10, Room Tioga Sports Center, Binghamton, New York. Water and plenty of it. Saturday's practice was a wash, but Sunday, Mother Nature turned out the sunshine and the fans came out in droves. At the start of motor number one, it wasn't Ricky Carmichael or Chad Reed. It was Craig Anderson who picked up the whole shot. Kevin Windham was on the move, as was Ricky Carmichael. Windham would make the pass on Rodriguez. Chad Reed would return the favor on Wyndham as he would move into second place, relegating Wyndham to third. Reed and Wyndham both had fantastic races, but in the end, it was Ricky Carmichael who dominated photo number one from Binghamton. Despite all the rain, Carmichael was perfect in Moto 1. Would it be the same for Moto 2? Joaquin Rodriguez just would not go away, this time taking the inside line and running up front with Ricky Carmichael. Later, Chad Reed would make a pass on Joaquin Rodriguez, leaving the KTM behind. Now, Reed would go to work in trying to track down the Honda of Ricky Carmichael. Kevin Windham got sideways, got squirrely. Oh, Kata! But he got back up. Yard sale, throwing it around. Another classic Tortelli charge to the front of the pack. Starting way back in the 10th position, Tortelli would pass Anderson for eight, then David Billman for six. The next rider to get the wrath of Tortelli was Joaquin Rodriguez in his fifth place position. Tortelli wasn't done there, making a slick move on Sean Hamlin to move into fourth. While Tortelli was moving through the field, Ricky Carmichael was moving to yet another checkered flag. And while he was celebrating, Tortelli and Fonseca gave us one of our best finishes of the year. Oh my! Sebastian Tortelli and Ernesto Fonseca get together right near the finish line and both men go down. It was the battle for third, the finish line won that went to Ernesto Fonseca. The penultimate round, Steel City Raceway, Delmont, Pennsylvania. The stars were out in force, Travis Pastrana, Ricky Carmichael, and the king, Jeremy McGrath. Michael Essie had dusted himself off looking for a better finish than last time around. But when the gate dropped, once again, Ricky Carmichael showed everyone who was boss. A star-studded pileup on lap number one, Reed, Rodriguez, McGrath, and Alessi. Kevin Windham got out and got away and made this pass for third on Clark Stiles. He next went to work on Kyle Lewis for second. Meanwhile, young Michael Lessie was on the move as well. The 800 bike made this pass on Craig Anderson for seven. Speaking of passing, Sebastian Tortelli, number 103, was up to his old tricks, making this pass on Kyle Lewis for fourth. But to no one's surprise, by virtue of this win in motor number one, Ricky Carmichael would clinch the 2004 outdoor title. I can't believe it. It hasn't sunken in yet. And, uh... 
I didn't think I'd be here uh, when I was at Hangtown, you know. Uh, man, it's just been an awesome ride. And like I said, it hasn't sunken in. I still got another motor to go, but I'm really happy. I want to give this to my man right here, my dog. No. Yeah. With the number one plate safely secured, Ricky Carmichael went to work for his sponsors and was not laying down on the job. Motor number two and the whole shot would go to none other than Ricky Carmichael. Jeremy McGrath back in the fray once again, making this pass on Justin Buckaloo for fifth. And while McGrath was making his move, so was young Michael Lessie. Michael Lessie and Jeremy McGrath on the track at the same time. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham trying to work his way up through the field, still had to get past Joaquin Rodriguez for fifth. And then the classic showdown, Wyndham versus McGrath. It's so cool to see those guys battling again. But it wouldn't last long as Jeremy McGrath would have to withdraw due to mechanical problems. Kevin Wyndham extending a courtesy. Uh, a lot of guys say he's got a bullseye on his back and stuff. I wasn't going to go out there and just take him out, so I was just going to uh, make the pass. And once again, Carmichael showed why he was the class of the field. And look at that. He charged literally to the last corner. And in the end, a reflective moment for Ricky Carmichael. You know, my deal, it's a bittersweet deal. But, uh, you know, and I'm definitely, they got a great bike, and uh, I just wish they could have done it. But uh, people change, things change, and, uh, you know, time changes. Glen Helen, baby. <laughs> Nothing like Southern California in round number 12. Glen Helen Raceway Park, San Bernardino, California. Ricky Carmichael rolling out the number one plate. But in practice, a disaster strike. Carmichael and Wyndham with full bounced back from that incident. But it was Kyle Lewis who would get the whole shot. Chad Reed wasted no time with Carnage on the track to get past Lucky Lewis and move into first place. The next rider to fight by Kyle Lewis, running the number one plate, was Ricky Carmichael. Could it be that Carmichael and Reed had saved their best for last? But Chad Reed would make a slight mistake, and that's all the champ would need. Kyle Lewis, who picked up the whole shot in motor number one, had this slight bobble, but he would recover to come back and make the pass on Sebastian Tortella. Sebastian Tortelli would come right back and return the favor on Lucky Lewis, taking an inside line at Glenn Helen. Then Tortelli sets his sights once again on David Billiman. Frenchman to Frenchman, you better pack a lunch and bring your sister, because I'm coming on through. Showing his speed, Sebastian Tortelli makes the pass on the outside, then comes back in on Sean Hamlin. The checkered flag came out in moto number one, and your winner, Ricky Carmichael. Uh, the moto was awesome. I got a pretty good start and was able to get Chad pretty quick and pulled away. I felt really good. It's really hot today, and uh, we're looking forward to the next moto. One more. The definition of pressure, 23 wins with one to go. That's where all the pressure is. When you're sitting on the line and you made it this far, you're like, you can't screw you can't it up, throw it up now. Ricky would not get the whole shot. That honor would go to Kyle Lewis, but he was safe in second place. Carmichael keeps the rubber side down, moves ahead of Kyle Lewis. So with Ricky Carmichael out in front, Chad Reed now made his assault on the leader as he moved past Kyle Lewis. The battle for fifth, Joaquin Rodriguez and Sebastian Tortelli. Not giving an inch, I love it. As the race wore on, we had a great battle for third between Ernesto Fonseca and Kyle Lewis. 
But despite all their jockey, despite all their attempts, no one could stop the train that was number four, in this case, number one. Ricky Carmichael walks away with the win and another perfect season. $325 to each member of the team, but more importantly, Ricky Carmichael does what many thought would never happen again, the perfect season. Can't believe it's, uh, you know, especially sitting at home watching uh, Chad dominate the Supercross, and uh, I knew I was a strong candidate for the title, and uh, I'm so happy. I was almost in tears the last lap, and uh, I had a lump in my throat for sure. It's, it's amazing. So 2004 became the season of perfection, part two. No one thought Ricky Carmichael could come back and do it again, especially after a season-ending knee surgery that kept him out of the entire Supercross series. Carmichael was dominant in typical Carmichael fashion. Chad Reed also showed his mastery of the four-stroke, and Kevin Windham, once again, was very consistent. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation. We'll see you next year for the 2005 season. I'm Todd Harris. Thanks for watching. The all-new Geomax MX-34 is the latest result of Dunlop's ongoing development with the help of top motocross pros. The all-new Geomax MX-34 is the new industry standard for soft to intermediate terrain. Experience the advantage.